What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Waters, and welcome to No Life Till Metal. It's time for yet another rock metal update. That's right, time for another rock and metal update. This is uh, going to be all 12 inch vinyl. Get right into it with Cloven Hoof. This is a brand new album from Cloven Hoof. This, of course, um, does not feature George Call on vocals, um, which is kind of why I put off buying it a little bit. Um, I'm a huge fan of George Call's vocals. I think he's one of the best, you know, modern power metal, heavy metal vocals out there. He's, you know, sang with Aska, um, obviously Cloven Hoof, and he also sang with, uh, with Banshee. And. So I was a little disappointed, but then I found out that they've got Harry the Tyrant Conklin on vocals. Of course, everybody knows who that is. If you don't, you're probably not a you know big fan of traditional metal. He was you know part of Jag Panzer, Titan Force, uh, Satan's Host, uh, among others. Anyhow, he, so when I found that out, I was like, oh, right on. I don't know how I missed that news. So I went ahead and picked it up and not disappointed. I only had a chance to listen to it once. I've only had it a very short time, but I was not disappointed whatsoever. Great traditional heavy metal album from the New Wave British heavy metal band. Of course, the only original member left in this band is bass player Lee. Um, Lee. Daggummit. Can't remember his name. <laughs> Let me look it up real quick. Lee. Lee pa uh, gosh, is it Payne? P A Y N E or something like that? Uh, I gotta look it up because I cannot remember for the life of me. Yeah, Lee Payne, I was correct. I should have just went with my gut. So yeah, he's the, I believe he's the only original member in the band. At least that's he was for a long time. I don't know if they brought anybody else back, but it's a nice picture of the band on the inside. And this is on a, uh, as the hype sticker you might have saw earlier said, it's on a purple, purple wax. So cool. Yeah, I, I'm, I like Cloven Hoof a lot. Like I said, I was disappointed when they parted away with George Call. I really felt that... You know, um, he added something special to the band, um, which he did. And if you, I guess, if you're gonna, you, you know, if you're gonna have to replace a vocalist like George Paul, you're gonna have to step up your game. So bringing in Harry the Con Harry the Tyrant Conklin is uh, your next best thing, right? Uh, because yeah, he's a great vocalist as well. So uh, highly recommend it. Yeah, it's it's you know a good album from them. All right, next three are all from the same band. I may have shown one of these before, but. This is a band that I've been really into recently. This is, of course, Dan Lorenzo's band. Dan Lorenzo, uh, previously of Hades and, gosh, he's been in so many different bands, but Hades and Nonfiction were two of his main bands. And then, of course, you've also got uh, on drums, let's see, there's a picture in the back. I'm trying to find the insert. There it is. Uh, there we go. So on drums, um, uh, let's see. Vocalists are all over the place. There's every single album has has a slew of different vocalists. So there's only two guys that are constant members in this band, being Dan Lorenzo and the drummer, whose name is I'm I'm spacing on it, but I'm I'm gonna I'll find it in a second. Uh, John Kelly. So John Kelly has been in Quiet Riot, but he's known for his work with uh, Typo Negative. He was a Typo Negative drummer for a. You know, I think the entirety of the band, if I'm not mistaken. But there's the insert. Uh, anyhow, this is very dark, doomy, Sabbath-inspired, um, hard rock, heavy metal, whatever you want to call it. Um, I really, really like this. This is the first one I picked up. This is their first album. I picked it up on CD. Immediately start, started searching for the rest of their albums. And I, now I finally have all three on vinyl and CD. <laughs> That's how much I really like these things. So I highly, highly recommend this stuff. Yeah, uh... Dan's guitar work on here is spectacular. Um, you know, Dan's never been known as like a, a flashy guitar player, but he's a solid guitar player, and his influences date back to, you know, uh, the classic bands, you know, Kiss and uh, Grand, Grand Funk, and, um, you know, just that, all that 70s stuff. But Hades, of course, was a thrash band. So, I mean, you got all those influences in here, but honestly, they create a sound that's pretty unique. Um, if, I can't really compare them to anybody in particular. Uh, it's just, like I said, really dark, doomy, um, Sabbath-y inspired heavy metal and fantastic vocals throughout. They do stray a bit from the traditional. Um, like Dan is also a big fan of uh, rap music. So there, he actually brings it, I don't know if I think he played on this particular album, but he actually has DMC from Run DMC singing on a couple songs, and he really does sing, um, it, and he's got a great voice. So uh, anyhow, Reach for the, Scot Reach for the uh, Scars by Patriarchs in Black. Like I said, 
uh, just fantastic heavy metal. I think the next one I've actually shown before, but I'm going to show it again anyhow. This is the second album from Patriarch in Black. My veneration. And if I would have picked up this one first, there's a big hype sticker on the front of it that says, Features John Kelly of Typo Negative and Dan Lorenzo of Hades and Nonfiction. Includes a vinyl-only bonus track of Queen's Dragon Attack. So that's awesome. Uh, they do a great job of the covers, and the whole, whole album is great. Again, now DMC does sing on this one. There's actually a little card that came with mine. I have the card in the back. Uh, again, similar style. They're not veering from what they did here. I mean, if you like this one, your chances are you're going to like this one maybe even better. I think the production is a hair better on this one. Uh, not that that one was bad. It's just great, like doomy, sludgy, heavy metal with uh, a lot of 70s influences and fantastic vocals. So, um, yeah, there you go. I'm not going to get too deep into it because I have the new album, 2024. And, oh, my gosh, I've spun this thing like... I think I've had this thing uh, maybe a month or two, if that, and I, I can't even tell you how many times I spun it. Between this and, I, like I said, I bought the CD as well. love the cover art, too. Very spacey, hippie, um, a bit modern, but almost looks like a prog rock album, right? No, it's not a prog rock album. This, it's just great, like, like I said, dark, doomy, sludgy, heavy metal. It's not thrash, so don't get that mistaken. Um, typo Negative fans... You know, or Hades fans, nonfiction fans, you know, that's not necessarily the sound here, but you're not going to be disappointed if you like just good old heavy metal because that's what you got going on there. All right, next up, I don't know if I showed this one or not. I started pulling all the records that I, and I kind of had a mix, mixed up mess, but I'm going to show it again anyhow. I've, I've shown a few of their albums in the recent years, but this is Germany's uh, Holy Moses. My gosh, this is great thrash metal. I mean, these guys have been around since the 80s. They've got tons of albums out. Um, I just had been missing this one, and Svart Records did a reissue of it. You can get this thing like about $23, $24 right now. So if you're into you know German thrash, check this out. Uh, obviously, you got the comic book uh, cover art. comes with a comic book which I believe has all the lyrics, which it does in the middle. And let's see if I can... There's your comics. And then, of course, it's got in the back, flip through other your pages, it's got all the liner notes and whatnot. So I kind of have a cool little booklet in here. But uh, Sabrina, Princess of Hell, Klaassen. Uh, yeah, she's, she's the vocalist. She is raw. She is a thrash singer. Um, you don't tend to think of female singers as being, you know, real raw and thrashy. She is. Don't be deceived. She's not Lita Ford. She's not Joan Jett. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? She's not singing in a clean voice. She's, and she's not doing death growls either, because I know there's a lot of female singers out there doing death growls. No, she's a thrash singer, but she's aggressive. Really, really well done stuff um, from Holy Moses. Highly recommend this one. Uh, I think I showed their an EP not too long ago, and I also, of course, have their first two albums. Uh, yeah, eventually I'll have them all because I, I'm just super impressed with this band. Um, you know, people are always talking about uh, you know Creator and Destruction and Sodom, and those are great bands. But uh, there's so many other great great German thrash bands like Holy Moses and Accuser, uh, among others, Tankard. So, all right, next up, speak staying in the thrash metal then with this paradox, more German thrash. This is Heresy. Um, I got this brand new sealed for nine dollars. So I, I've had this thing on CD for decades. Um, didn't have an original pressing, so a buddy of mine's like, "Hey man, they got those on sale for nine dollars, brand new." So I, of course, I immediately went there and bought myself a copy, uh, and I bought two copies. So at nine dollars, man, eighteen bucks for two copies, and I, and I was able to hook a friend up with a copy. But uh, anyhow. USLP debut, so it's never been released in the U.S. on, on vinyl, I guess. The pulverizing 1989 thrash metal classic, Dark Grey, Inquisitor's Rose, pressing limited to 1,000 copies worldwide. So there you go. Um, yeah, another just great, great thrash band. And um, like I said, I, I'm almost positive they're from Germany as well. Um, sometimes these bands move around, like, except as a German band, but most of them live in the United States now. But pretty sure Paradox is still in Germany. All right, this is uh, getting a little bit more aggressive, kind of moving away from thrash more into the death metal range. This is uh, Repulsion, Horrified, and yeah, this is uh, I've had this. This is on Relapse Records. I've had this thing on CD for gosh, decades. And I did a uh, I did a, the Metal Roundtable, which is my other show. By the way, on a separate note, the Metal Roundtable is now streaming as well on my channel. So on Tuesdays. 
at 4 o'clock my 10, which is Mountain Standard Time, um, we have a live show usually every Tuesday featuring, it's usually fe featuring at least two up to four different guys from the Metal Roundtable. Sometimes we have guests. We've had on guys from, from Saxon. Uh, gosh, we've had so many. Different, we've had, I'm trying to think of a band. We've had at least two of the different members of Dark Angel on. We've had um, Motivic on. We've had... Uh, Gosh, it's, just, it's ridiculous. There's been so many bands. Um, we had Seether on last week. Two of the guys from Seether um, and Stuck Mojo. So yeah, it's it's a fun show. So you know, do check it out and um, go ahead and subscribe if you can. But like I said, it'll be streaming on uh, my channel now, so you can watch it on Tuesdays live. Uh, if you get into it and watch it live, you can also you know um, ask questions, especially when they're you know the, the bands are there, and we we put up the questions live and, and allow the you know the artists or whoever it is that's talking to answer them. So. Anyhow, all right, back to Repulsion. Um, I don't know, crossover thrash death uh, with a bit of a delivered in a punk vibe. Uh, this is a classic. Like I said, I've had it on CD for years. It was on the Metal Roundtable, and um, on the Metal Roundtable, we always have this thing called the Pick of the Week um, that, that Carcass John does. And the Pick of the Week is basically a metal album that every metal fan should own, and he showed this record. And I didn't have it on vinyl, so he's like... How can you not have this on vinyl? You've got so much vinyl. How can you not have this classic? Well, I just didn't have it. So I went and looked it up. It's been re-released a couple years ago on uh, on Relapse. Um, There's 2,500 copies. This one is one of the Ox Blood Red editions, um, which John tells me is one of the rarer copies. I don't know. There's so many different versions of it out there. So you can find these things fairly cheap. If you're into that kind of crossover thrash death metal, like Early Death or, um, I don't know, like a more... More slightly more death metal, Dark Angel, <laughs> uh, you know, just that beginnings of death metal when when thrash was was kind of becoming death metal. That's kind of what you get here. You get it, it kind of has some of the thrash leanings, but it, it definitely has uh, both feet planted into the death metal sound. And going from that to Confessor again. If I showed this one in the past, I apologize. Um, regardless, this is a frequent player of mine. I, I missed out on this band somehow, and somebody recommended them, which is one of the reasons I do videos. I love watching other people's videos, getting ideas, uh, and any people watching mine and say, hey, have you checked this band out? Uh, somebody's like, dude, you got to check out Confessor. So I checked out Confessor. I bought Unraveled. Dang, this is a good album. Different style. This is kind of an epic doom thing going on here. Traditional, you know, heavy metal, but more in the range of, like, epic doom, like, I don't know, say Candlemass, you know, kind of in that range. But yeah, I'm really, really impressed with this band. So I will be getting more and adding more to my collection. Um, I can't remember what year this came out. It was on Southern Lord Records, so you know it's going to be doomed to begin with. Uh, and I think this is an original pressing on Southern Lord. Um, I think uh, I think it was also on Seasons of Mist Records at one point. So yeah, great stuff. Uh, Confessor, maybe you guys can su suggest other albums from them if if anybody knows them really well. This is literally the only one I have at the moment, but looking forward to getting more. Another band that this is the only album I have from them. Uh, I need to in search more, but uh, this is within the fire. Man, this is just good straight up heavy metal. Really, really well done. I mean, if this had been released in nineteen, I don't know, eighty seven, I think these guys would have just dominated because it's just that good. I mean, great guitar work, fantastic vocals. The rhythm section is just pounding. Um, it's an independent release. I'm not exactly sure where you can find a copy, um, but so you got Jeff Daly on drums, Joe uh, Pecky, Pecciola on bass, R.J. Pepino on guitar, Rom Roman uh, Singleton on guitar, and Scott Featherstone on vocals. So there's the band. But yeah, like I said, just great traditional metal. Some might some might call it power metal, but that's pretty much what you got going on there. Okay, sorry for the interruption. My phone rang and I couldn't let it go. I had to answer it. So that's, you know, kind of the way it is when you have a business to run. So, all right, well, I was, where I left off, I believe, was, was, was with this band, Within the Fire. Uh, like I said, look them up. Bandcamp, probably the best place to get it if you're interested. If you're a fan of, you know, like I said, traditional heavy metal, you're not going to be disappointed with this. It's really, really well done. Just great stuff. This is the insert. Lyrics, liner notes, whatnot. Great band. Um... <clears throat> They deserve to be on a label. If they're not, I don't think they are. I think this is an independent release, but uh, actually, it is on a label. Uh, let's see here. Animated Insanity Records. I don't know if that's a label or if it's an independent thing, but regardless, great band. Really glad I, I, I uh, you know, 
actually was sent to me by the band. Um, if, I don't get a whole lot of free records from bands, but so they, they said, hey, can we send you one of our records? Really love your channel. And I said, sure. Um, they sent it to me, and so, you know, thanks for the record, because, yeah, it was, it's, it's good stuff. I'm really impressed. Uh, so anyhow, next up, EP, Japanese pressing, OB Strip. This is Crocus. This is Heat Strokes. Um, four song EP so it's got Heat Strokes and Tokyo Nights on the A side and the B side has Bedside Radio which was you know one of their early hit singles wasn't that big of a hit here but uh, and then uh, Shy Kid and both those tracks are live and they're actually really well done it's funny, funny he's talking about foot, uh, football or soccer you know as we know it but he's talking about football and how Germany lost and how disappointed they were that Germany lost in this thing and I was like Okay, <laughs> that's just just funny hearing stuff like that on an, on an old record, you know. It is forty five RPM, and I think this came out like nineteen, gosh, it had to be nineteen seventy nine, nineteen eighty. So it's a pretty pretty early thing, and, and this copy is in pristine condition. So I was really glad to find this for a decent price with the OB. Um, I actually purchased another one, which I'm not showing, and I don't think I'm showing in this one. Um, yeah, I'm not showing it in this one. I purchased another album from another band that, uh, in the picture, it showed the OB, and it got here, and it was said it was in mint condition, and had the inserts, and blah, 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 and I get it, and there's no OB. So I'm like, what the heck? So I go back to eBay, and I look at the picture. Sure enough, there's an OB on the picture. I'm like, did I miss something in the new notes? Yeah, if you click down in, in eBay, and it has the, you know, it's, it actually says in the notes, so you have to read into it. Uh, picture, not actual product, uh, does not contain OB. I was like, oh, come on. Why did you picture it then? But you know, my fault for not reading it. I wanted to go back and slam the guy for picturing it, but, you know, like I said, my fault. I didn't read it. All right, next up, this one I could be showing in a, um, I could be showing this either in a, you know, I, I do like the live bootleg videos. Um, this one is, is a definitely a bootleg, but uh, this is David Lee Roth. Um, personally, I think Eat Him and Smile is one of the best Van Halen albums that Van Halen never did. Uh, it's just really, really great album one of my favorites from from roth of course i really van when it comes to van halen the first four five albums i think are fantastic i kind of lose interest after that um i kind of like sammy hagar outside of van halen especially his uh his stuff at montrose but with van halen it was just so i don't know it just didn't do much for me i don't dislike it it's just you know not something i really collect or listen to that often this album, the first David Lee Roth, I love this album. I've seen him live twice on this on that tour. Uh, it was a fantastic show. I mean, you got Steve Vai and Billy Sheehan. So I mean, these guys are just veterans. Um, Greg Bissonette, I believe, on drums. But yeah, this this here is actually uh, the demos. So you've got Yankee Rose demo, I'm Easy demo, Liddy's Night in Buffalo demo, Elephant Gun demo, Big Trouble demo, Bump and Grind demo, a jam. Um, that's only about two minutes long, and then it's got a couple of David Lee Roth like in the studio banter. You know, he he was kind of the character. So uh, that's the A side. The A side is worth the price of this if you could find a copy. I, I I picked this up on eBay. There is a seller who has a few more copies on there for you to go to eBay and look. Um, the name of the album is Eat Him and Smile Demos and Live. So the live tracks are from the on the B side, and those are Just Like Paradise. Knuckle Bones, Going Crazy, Yankee Rose, and California Girls, and this live 1988 from the Hammersmith Odeon in London. Uh, it, the, it, the tracks are okay, um, but it, those A-side tracks, like I said, they're fantastic. They're very different than what ended up being on the album. Maybe even a little bit heavier. Um, I don't know, regardless, I, I just enjoyed the album so much. It was really fun hearing different takes of those songs. So if you're a fan of that album, you, you know, Eat Him and Smile, this is definitely worth picking up. Uh, cool collectible, regardless if you're a fan of David Lee Roth or Van Halen. So, all right, next up, uh, getting kind of more into the rock stuff now, I think. Uh, there's some, actually, there's all kinds of stuff mixed in here, so we're just going to keep going. <laughs> all right, this is Michael Schenker's newest release. This is My Years with UFO, uh, 50th anniversary celebration, 1972, 1978. So these are tracks that he recorded with UFO, re-recorded, with all kinds of different musicians and different vocalists and whatnot. So you've got Natural Thing with uh, Dee Snyder on vocals. you got Only You Can Rock Me with Joey Tempest and Roger Glover. you got Dr. Doctor with Jolyn Turner and Carmen Apice. Mother Mary with Slash and Eric uh, Gronwell. This, uh, this Kid's featuring Biff Byford on vocals. Uh, Love to Love with Axl Rose on vocals. And I am not the biggest Guns N' Roses fan in the world, but 
he's great on this. <laughs> I, I actually thought he was really good when he was singing for ACDC, uh, filling in on, on, the, on the tour. Uh, uh, you know, if you go listen to some of this stuff on YouTube, I thought he did really well. So he does great on this as well. Anyhow, so you got um, Lights Out, of course, with Jeff Scott Soto and John Norum. Uh, Rock Bottom with Kai Hansen, Too Hot to Handle uh, with Joel Lynn Turner, Adrian Vandenberg, and Carmen Apice. Let It Roll with Michael Voss, and Shoot Shoot with Stephen Piercy. And, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Now, is it a necessity for people? If you're a UFO or Michael Shanker fanatic like I am, then yes, it is. If you are just a casual fan of UFO, then probably not. Um, but it's really well recorded. Um, he sticks pretty close to the originals, although a couple of the tracks towards the end, it, it, this, the, they're more like the, the tracks you heard on um, on the live album than you know than uh, the studio tracks. And, and, and the jams are there, and, and you know. Shanker lets loose on some guitar solos, so there's that. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Two album set. Um, it is, and it does have some nice inserts in there. As you can see sticking out here. Um, my only disappointment with it is, is they put so much money into the inserts and stuff. Yet they instead of it's not a gatefold, it's just a double wide sleeve. So I'm not a big fan of the double wide sleeves. Uh, they tend to. This one didn't, thankfully. They tend to. Um, pop the spines or the ink cracks uh, but thankfully this one didn't regardless good album you can get it anywhere amazon and it's not real expensive so uh this is one i i've just been in a, i've been listening to a lot of 70s stuff recently i don't know why i just got in this mood and um if, if you watch the the last episode of uh, metal roundtable i kind of explained all these bands that i was listening to humble pie being one of them and i actually showed this record uh this is early humble pie you know um peter frampton era from the 60s and early 70s um, so this is a, it says best of or, or greatest hits. There ain't no hits on this. <laughs> this, is a, this is early stuff. This is like putting out the first, uh, you know, the first two uh, Aerosmith albums and, and, and just picking songs from that and saying greatest hits. It's just not the case. Um, but there's just some great songs on here. Natural Born Women, Desperation, A Nifty Little Number Like You, Every Mother's Son, Alabama 69, The Sad Bag of Shaky Jake, Home and Away, Heartbeat, uh, Silver Tongue, as safe as yesterday and down home again and all these songs are written by either steve mary or peter frampton um, just great old school hard rock uh, and, and i'm still missing the first two humble pie albums so when i saw this and it was a really good price and in really great condition even has the original high sticker featuring peter frampton on it i was stoked so uh yeah i really enjoyed this i would say reissue those first two peter just first two humble pie albums um i just can't find copies that are in, even when I go to like record stores and run across them, I've been in record shows and run across them. They just always tore up and in just crappy shape. And I, I actually like listening to my records, so I don't want a crappy record just to fill a hole in a collection. So uh, until that time, this fills my fill a hole in the collection, and this is something I enjoyed listening to. Speaking of Peter Frampton, I picked up an upgrade copy of uh, Wind of Change. This is a, um, a second pressing. Um, I, I just couldn't find a really clean version every single copy i see it doesn't matter if it's in record stores or even on e go on ebay there's 100 copies on there for you know five to twenty dollars in that range you know but every single one has excessive ring wear this one has a very little ring wear you can kind of see a little up there but it's a pretty clean copy and there's a lot of mellower moments on here you know acoustic guitars and that kind of thing it's it's a, it's a hard a rock and roll album but yeah there's some mellower moments on here so you don't want a lot of you know uh, Rice crispy sounds, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I just kept looking until I found a better copy, and this copy was near mint. So yeah, uh, I, I know uh, it's funny. I actually posted my playlist on. I always post my vinyl playlist on a bunch of different groups, and one particular group I posted this album along with Creator and a, and a few other metal albums I listened to. And dudes like, you listen to Peter Frampton? You're a poser. Dang, stupid poser. Whatever. Um, you li listen to what you like. Who cares if if it's poser music or not i listen to what i like and i happen to like peter frampton like i said i've been getting into a lot of 70s music just in that mood and this is i have a lot of i actually have this on cd for years i have the first album i have the third album i have frampton comes live i have the follow-up i have a lot of other peter frampton albums this one was just missing in my collection and i actually traded a friend and he sent me a copy but his copy was just it sounded like rice krispies couldn't deal with it so i just kept looking until i finally found a good copy of way to change solid album it's got a lot of uh, tracks on here. Everybody's going to know his cover of Jumpin' Jack Flash is on here. It's a Plain Shame. Made it onto uh, Fr Frampton Comes Alive. Uh, All Right, the killer song. Um, 
All I Want to Be Is By Your Side, another song I made it on to Friends That Comes Alive. That's a great song. It's like, I think it's almost seven minutes long, uh, as The Lodger is too. The Lodger is like six minutes long. It's a good album. It's just rock and roll, you know what I mean? It's just great 70s rock. I know Peter Frampton has a reputation for being, uh, you know, poppy whatever. Uh, I think his reputation got really mangled from that Sgt. Pepper's movie, but um, regardless, I think his first four studio albums and Frampton Comes Alive are essential. I had to pick this up. I mean, you guys know me. I'm a Nugent fanatic. I've been a Nugent fanatic since I was a kid. Um, this just came out. It's an EP. It's the Fred Bear 35th Anniversary Edition EP. Um, it's four songs, all different versions of the same song. I have so many versions of Fred Bear, it's ridiculous, but I am a Nugent collector, so I picked this up. It's still sealed. Probably will stay sealed. Um, I have all these tracks on on CD. The only one I'm not sure I've heard is there's a live version from Toledo in 1994, but I think I have a bootleg of that, so I, I don't know. I may open it. We'll see. But there you go. Picture of Ted Nugent, Fred Bear on the cover. Um, it's a collectible that I had to grab. All right, we got some prog, the fusion, uh, syndicate. Um, they have several albums out, uh, lots of different guys. So you got John Etheridge, Helios Creed, uh, Jerry Goodman, Angela Moore, Theo Travis, Marty Friedman, uh, Brian Auger, Robbie Krieger, The Doors, uh, Ja Wobble, Chester Thompson, Genesis, Michael Hampton, uh, Alfonso Johnson, and Fernando Perdomo. That's the that's the band. So they, I mean, those are all you know known names from all different styles of music. I mean, you've got you know everybody from Fr Marty Friedman who was a Megadeth to you know the the drummer from Genesis, you know who, who toured with them for years. Uh, when Gen when you know, when Phil Collins was the front man, they had someone else playing drums. It was Chester Thompson. So you've just got a variety. You got P Funk on here, you know Parliament. Just but music. It's, this is great. It's just prog. Uh, a lot of instrumental work here. Not a whole lot of vocals on this thing, but. I picked it up on a whim. I was talking on the phone to one of the record companies I work with. He was talking about, I don't remember what exactly he was talking about, but we started talking about, he's like, you ever heard of the Fusion Syndicate? And I'm like, no. We started looking it up. We just listened to a few tracks. And the both of us was like, damn, <laughs> this is good. So we both ended up purchasing this record. Uh, and now I will be adding more Fusion Syndicate to my collection because I really dig it. Bit of jazz fusion going on, uh, but mostly just a great prog rock album. Then Actually, there's some funk elements too, which you would expect. So... Um, yeah, if you're into prog rock, the Fusion Syndicate, this one's called Beautiful Horizon, worth picking up. All right, next up, you guys know I'm a Lizzie fanatic. Another Thin Lizzy um, collection, this one here being from, uh, I believe this is German pressing, uh, maybe it was England. Let's see, a product of Pickwick International and in London, so this is a UK pressing. Uh, odd odd collection of songs, because it's, it's called The Boys Are Back in Town, but it's not... A whole lot of hit songs on here it's mostly uh deep cuts um the boys are back in town leads the album off so that's the big hit but then they have don't play around with love emerald half cast and bad reputation a lot of those songs are very deep cuts and if i'm not mistaken i ah gosh i can't remember the top of my head i think half cast is a b-side um me and the boys which is definitely a b-side track on a single uh memory pain sha la la which is a song that they immortalized on live and dangerous got to give it up uh, for those who love to live and the pressure will blow. I got to give it up. Liz, anything Lizzie, it doesn't matter what it is. Compilations, bootlegs, live albums, singles, EPs, Phil's underwear, <laughs> whatever. I'm just really into Thin Lizzy. I kind of like Frampton or Aerosmith or Kiss. I've literally been into them since the 70s when I was a kid. I got into music early. I was literally in grade school and became obsessed with rock and roll. And uh, this is one of the bands I became obsessed with, and I still am today. And I'm still looking for collector stuff, and I'm still finding it. So not only did I pick that up, but I picked up the new remixed 2024 version of Jailbreak. There's also a remixed 2024 version of um, a Johnny the Fox, which I'm also planning on getting uh i wasn't sure if i wanted to pick this up i i mean i literally have this on cd and cassette and a track and about three different vinyl pressings so do i really need a fourth vinyl pressing uh yeah yeah i do <laughs> um this is completely remixed from the original masters there is alternative takes and vocals there is intros that weren't there before that were added back in there's it's just a really cool hearing you know the kind of like the david lee roth hearing 
different takes, different versions on these classic songs that I've heard a million times over. Uh, I've had it for maybe a couple weeks, and I've already played it two or three times, and really, really enjoyed it. Cover's pretty similar to the original, although it, the besides the photo of the band here, the outside is actually the negative version. But, yeah, back cover is pretty similar to the original. It is a gatefold, which I guess I can show you real quick. And it is, I believe, on colored vinyl, if I'm not mistaken. So here's the gatefold. You can see some of the singles. The original inside insert that um, the UK had a, this was a cutout. This part here was a cutout. And then it had that insert in it, which was this, that shone through. And I do have that one, but in the US, that was, they didn't have that. It was just printed like that. Uh, and it's on a silver, silver vinyl. So, yeah, fantastic. I, I, I mean, this is just one of the greatest albums ever recorded, in my opinion. You can disagree if you want, but like I said, I've been a fan for decades. So, um, very worthwhile if you're a Lizzie fan. If you're if you're a passive fan, probably not. But if you're a Lizzie fanatic, you got to get this. This is fantastic. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing Johnny the Fox remix as well. Again, this is one I would normally say for a bootleg one, but I had to show it because I had these ones, and I was just so excited to find this. Thin Lizzy, live from Germany, 1973. This is live power trio Lizzy, uh, before they kind of went into the dual guitar, heavy metal sound that they, you know, kind of inspired into Iron Maiden and all those other bands. But this uh, this is fantastic. I was so excited to, to find uh, an Eric, you know, an Eric Bell bootleg of... Uh, um, Thin Lizzy, and this thing is actually not old, it's, gosh, it doesn't have a year of release on there anywhere that I can see, but, um, uh, the sound quality, it's bootleg, it's not, you know, it's pristine, uh, album quality, but it's not bad either, I mean, I don't know if you remember the, the old Hot Wax rating system, I'd probably grade this one as a B, it's not an A, A+, plus. it's probably a B, it, it's got some compression, it's, it, it sounds to me like it might have been a radio broadcast, but, uh, doesn't matter. I really enjoyed it. Track listing, Vagabonds of the Western World, uh, Doctor Who theme, 69 Rock, Suicide, that's the early version of Suicide, 73, Slow Blues, uh, Whiskey in a Jar, Things Ain't Working Out Down the Farm, um, a, The Rocker, and is that it? What I missed in Suicide? That's it, yeah. So it's what? Eight tracks? Eight tracks. So single album, black vinyl, Nick, it could have been polka dot vinyl. I don't care. It, it, I would have bought it. Uh, just, I just love Thin Lizzy. So, alrighty then. I'm still going. This is a long video. Sorry. I'm, I'm almost done though. I think I only have one, uh, one more. Yeah. After this one, Scorpions, another one of those bands that I, just, especially Yuli era stuff and the early stuff. I always pick it up. This is very, very early. Um, this is basically Lonesome Crow. This is a German pressing on. Brain Records with an alternative color cover, and it's called Starlight, um, which I think was a series. Um, but yeah, you've, I love. I've always loved the Lonesome Crow album. I, I mean, I, I know it's not the same today. Now that music is, you know, you can stream it for free and all that kind of stuff. But back when, you know, in the '70s and the '80s, when I was a kid, you only had a certain amount of records, and you would play those records over and over and over again. And I had a copy of Lonesome Crow when I was a kid, and uh, like I said, I played it over and over. It's very different from what the band became. Uh, almost, a, you know, kind of like early UFO kind of has that almost psych space rock thing going on. But, yeah, I mean, it's, I, this, the title track is like 13 minutes long, 13 and a half minutes long. So just cool. Um, I always collect different versions of this album, and I just happened to run across this one for a really good price. And as you can see, it's in really good shape, both the cover and the vinyl. So nice. And a great picture of the band, too, a classic picture of the band. Rudolf Schenker, Claus Mean with lots of hair. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. All right. Um, oh, maybe that is it. I, I I don't know. I may have shown this one already it's sitting here, so I'll show it again. <laughs> uh, uh, kind of a theme going here. Another German thrash band, Death Row. Um, this is a used copy, Raging Steel. Uh, it's a great album. Another great band uh, from Germany. Uh, this one... The vinyl's in really good condition. The cover is not bad. It's It's got some flaws in the top there. You can see it's got a, a cut, uh, whether it be a promo copy or... It's probably a promo copy. I can't imagine this was, that this was ever in a, you know, cutout bin. But it also has 225 S 
S. Malloy or something like that. So that, I'm assuming that's somebody's name and a number of the album in their collection. So, Mr. Malloy, yeah, I have, I, I have your, your Death Row album, and no, you can't have it back. And I apologize for the dog barking. And that's it. Appreciate y'all watching. Please leave a message below. Thumbs up. You know, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I always appreciate uh, all the comments that I get and, and, and chatting with you guys. And that's it. Have a great day. God bless and stay strong.